Hello everybody, welcome back. Thanks for tuning in to another episode in the series here. My name is Dominic and I am the host of the Android Factory. Last episode we basically introduced the idea of the Rick and Morty API and specifically looking to build an Android app around the API. So today we're going to go ahead and dive into Retrofit and set some things up. So nothing has changed here, we still have an empty activity, we still have the same old uh, layout file, but inside of our build.gradle file we're going to go ahead and update some things. So all of this can really stay the same. We're going to add in this block here to enable view binding, which we will use in a little bit. Then inside of our dependency section, we're going to add the dependency for retrofit. I'll link this page in the description, but if you just search for Android retrofit, it's very easy to find yourself on this documentation here. So taking a look down here, pretty far down in the documentation, we have our Gradle import line, and we need to find the latest version. We'll do so by just checking out the GitHub repo. And we can see here, latest 1.6.0 from 2004. Four, no, 2014, excuse me. One other import I'm gonna add here as part of this is the Moshi import. We'll dive into this in a little bit once we start parsing this JSON, but essentially Moshi will allow us to deserialize JSON into data classes in our Kotlin project which ultimately boil down to domain layer, network layer objects. Once we have that all set up, we're gonna go ahead and click Sync Now. We'll see our Gradle project sync in progress, and this is gonna go ahead and fetch the libraries that we've told it to into our project so that we can actually use them inside of our own code. All right, once that's all synced up here, we're just gonna go ahead and close our Gradle file since we won't really be needing it for a little bit. And we could flip back to the retrofit documentation here. So. Realistically, everything that you see on screen is all that we're going to need for a little bit, so I want to dive into this. We're going to start here with this retrofit instance. This is making use of the retrofit builder to actually go ahead and build a retrofit instance. And you can see here another line of code actually referencing a service, a GitHub service in this case, which makes use of our retrofit instance calling create on a particular class itself. Now if we take a look at the class that's defined right here, it is an interface. And so Retrofit actually makes it very easy for us as Android developers because it basically allows us to turn an interface into an entire way to communicate with an API. It gives us the freedom here to denote which request type each one of these network requests is gonna be. For our case, we're just gonna use get, but it supports all of them. Then it'll also allow you to fill out the remaining path after the base URL for the particular retrofit instance that you're using. And then we can very easily add in some variables along the way, some query parameters, some inline path variables, and then even define what our return type is going to be so that when we end up using it inside of our application, we have the proper structure. So let's dive into it here. Let's go ahead and copy this, even though it's in Java, flip back to Android Studio, and it will go ahead and actually, well, that's not right. We need the retrofit builder. Okay, now we are up and running here. I apologize, actually 1.6.0 was definitely not the version we needed. It is instead 2.9.0, flipping back to our, uh, the GitHub repo here for Square. I don't, know why this is out of date but this is saying 1.6.0 when you click into releases uh, on May 20th 2.9.0 was released so that makes a lot more sense because 2014 was quite a while ago so I don't know what happened there I apologize but we are moving on now so we have our retrofit instance here instead of this being our base URL we can go ahead and fetch it from the Rick and Morty API the documentation here the rest documentation and we're just going to go ahead and copy that bad boy. Perfect. We're going to go ahead and put a slash here so that we don't have to worry about putting slashes inside of the beginning of every one of our endpoint declarations inside of our interface, but this is the next step that we need. So instead of calling it a GitHub service, we're going to go ahead and create an interface that is called Rick and Morty service. And taking a look at the documentation here for getting a single character, we see this, a get on this API endpoint slash character slash a particular index here. So we can go ahead and copy this for now. And then we need to define this function here. 
So we're going to say get character by ID. For now, we're not going to pass any parameters in, but we will get to that. And then the return type here is going to be of type call, and then our parameterized type will for right now just be any. Just to get this up and running here, we can go ahead and create our Rick and Morty service here using our retrofit instance on the Rick and Morty service class.java. Now we can go ahead and utilize this service here. So if we take a look at it, we can call get character by ID. And at this point here, we are going to attempt to make a network request. However, if we actually go ahead and run this application, as we all know, we are inside of the on create here. We are running this code in this block on the main thread and trying to network or perform a network or long running operation on the main thread will result in an immediate runtime crash. So there's nothing wrong with it here inside of the IDE. There's no compile time issue, uh, but you will end up crashing the app the second it happens. So in order to combat that, we can call .nq, because remember this function is, a, is returning a call of at this moment any. So we can go ahead and call nq on the call. And now when we pass in a callback, we get the opportunity to handle the on response and the on failure of this particular network operation. So for now, we're just going to very easily log whatever we get here. All right, so let's give the application a run here. All we're simply doing is logging inside of our on response and on failure callbacks. Okay, we have our app launching the activity, comes into the foreground and it crashes. Let's go ahead and take a look at the run tab to diagnose this. Aha, unable to create converter. That was a critical step that I ended up missing here. We need to add a converter factory to this uh, retrofit instance and this is where Moshi comes into play. Okay, so a little bit of changing around here and we needed to actually create a Moshi instance. We do so by just invoking its own builder and adding the Kotlin JSON adapter factory to the Moshi instance, not to the uh, retrofit instance during its builder process. So I apologize for getting mixed up there, uh, but then instead we call the Moshi converter factory to create based on our Moshi instance that we've defined here. And then uh, I missed an import that existed here that we needed for the retrofit two to have Moshi work well with retrofit in general. And then we needed the Kotlin JSON adapter factory because we are using Kotlin for our project here. So just a little bit of config to get up and running, but basically all you need to know is that Moshi is going to do the serialization and deserialization of the JSON. Retrofit is going to be handling making the network calls and it does so through our service, through an interface that we've defined with the proper annotations and we're back to where we were. So let's give it a run again. And we are installing, launching the activity, coming into the foreground, and again, another crash. Taking a look at the run tab again, we run into the first security exception, asking, do we have the internet permission? And I'm sorry to keep crashing the app on you here, but I do want to bring up these different things that kind of all need to fall in place in order to do that. So inside of our manifest file, basically a high level config for the application, we can define a specific permission. There's actually a whole bunch of them, but the one that we need for networking, as you would assume, is the internet permission. So we very simply just add it in there. And now let's go ahead and rerun the application. And we are up and running here. We are back to our hello world. It looks like absolutely nothing has happened, but if we check the logs here, we end up with this. So we actually have it our on response call here. And as you can see, we are logging the response object to string. So we can see that the code is 200, meaning that everything was okay, things were good. And in this case, we also are getting the URL. So let's hit a breakpoint here to kind of stop the execution in its tracks and allow us to take a look at what information is there. So rerunning the application and hitting this breakpoint, we can see we are stopped in the on response block of the callback. And if we take a look at our response object here, we can click to expand it. We can go ahead and look at the body itself. And now we can see some information, the ID, 
the name, the status, the species. Inside of the origin, we can see that it is another, essentially another object here that has name and URL inside of it. And if we just quickly bounce over to the scratch file here that we have, we can see here that this body is starting to really match up with what information we have seen here as far as the documentation, what we are expecting to get back. So with that in mind, this is actually the first network call that we've made on the channel. So go ahead and applaud that moment if you were waiting for an understanding of how to perform network requests inside of Android. And in the next episode, I think it is appropriate to go ahead and actually do something with this information, maybe get something on screen here and maybe build out a little bit better of a pattern here for ourselves because clearly we don't want to just have inside of our main activity uh, the retrofit instance, the Moshi instance, and the service and all this kind of stuff going on. So we will dive into cleaning this stuff up along with actually doing something with the information we just received. The last thing I want to mention about this uh, callback here, this NQ method, is that we are now entering the realm of asynchronous programming, right? Because we don't actually know when something is going to finish. We essentially attach this callback to this network operation and when something happens that's positive, we get it in the on response. And when something fails, uh, for instance, the entire network call failing, we'll go ahead and get information set in our on failure. So this is very important to understand because it's no longer a linear progression. Even though the code is written here, uh, we can't necessarily think about this function as running linearly as we know and love programs to do. That being said, previous episode, previous seasons, we've talked about Kotlin coroutines and Retrofit does have very nice support for Kotlin coroutines in general. So we will eventually uplift all of this to work properly with Kotlin coroutines. So stay tuned for that. Like if you enjoyed the video, please subscribe if you made it this far and notice you aren't, just so you don't miss out on any important information coming out. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thanks.